Well, hello, and welcome to this very special episode of uh, my YouTube channel, where I have done the unthinkable and I'm about to do the unthinkable. So what I have here is a boxed, never opened, as far as I can tell, uh, Todd McFarlane Movie Maniacs 3 King Kong figure. It is currently 2022. This came out in the year 2000, so this has been in the box for 22 years. I managed to get it off of Facebook Marketplace for $60 Canadian, which I'm pretty sure uh, you're not going to find a box one of these for that price uh, anywhere else. Uh, pure dumb luck, and just where I happen to live, I guess, that I managed to find it. And uh, I'm going to unbox it, <laughs> because I know I, got, I can hear the shrieks of a million toy collectors out there. But as I've said before, I collect toys, not boxes. So I am going to unbox this 22-year-old King Kong figure that came out as part of uh, Todd McFarlane, McFarlane Toys' uh, Movie Maniacs line. And uh, just to begin with, I never felt that King Kong really fit with that toy line. So if we look at the box here, um, you know, you've got the this beautiful mock-up of the movie poster. And it says here on the bottom, oh, McFarlane Toys, it's an attitude. Because that's, that's Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane, of course, one of the big 90s uh, comic book artists, a fixture of the 90s comic book scene, co-creator of Image Comics, co-founder, uh, creator of Spawn, and just all-around edgy, extreme 90s guy. If you've never seen the video of Rob Liefeld and Todd McFarlane uh, co-creating um, Overkill while Stan Lee critiques them, watch it. It is hilarious. <laughs> because it, it's, I mean, these two, like, 90s dude bros that just want to create, like, the most extreme guy, the most extreme villain, uh, just don't get how to create a character, and Stanley's trying to tell them, and they're just not getting it. It's, it's hilarious. Because they're just so 90s and extreme. And the Movie Maniacs line was a toy line, a toy line, McFarlane toys, McFarlane posable models, uh, that was based on, like, extreme edgy slasher horror stuff so like the rest of the line you can see on the back here it's oh it's like the fly and freddy and uh, the thing and michael myers and stuff like that and edward scissorhands which i also felt didn't really fit with the line because edward scissorhands is like a tim burton sort of like quaint and charming gothic fairy tale and then the 1933 king kong is somehow fitting in this line um so I don't think it really fits, but uh, I'll take it. I'll take it anyways, because uh, I'm just grateful that this beautiful-looking King Kong figure was ever actually made. And, yeah, this is, uh, this is unboxed. It's got the, still got the tape on the, on the edges there. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this thing up and see what it is that, uh, see what it is that we got. All right. So, got my, got my box cutter here. Do I feel bad about this? Almost kind of a little. I almost, almost kind of a little feel bad about this, um, knowing that I probably could flip this thing and resell it for significantly more um, than I actually bought it for. But that, again, that's not why I buy toys. I buy these toys because I want, I want to play with them. <laughs> I want to see them. I want to put, on my, put them on my shelf. Uh, and I buy toys, not boxes. So... I, I'm sorry for all of you out there who are going to have a stroke all of a sudden here, but let's cut this tape and let's dip in here. All right. Okay. I'm going to pull out. There's also another reason why I'm unboxing this thing is that, you know, the whole like smoke and pet free home? Yeah, no. Um, there was, there was already cat, uh, bags of cat hair outside this house that I bought it at, and, uh, when the door opened, I could smell the, the, the pot smoke wafting out, so I, not want to actually even keep the box, actually, but, um, here we go, out of the box, looking amazing, and this thing, as much as I make fun of Todd McFarlane for being, like, super 90 edgy's guy, and also, keep my McFarlane's from the same city as me. I'm coming to you from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, home of home of Todd McFarlane. Um, so, 
as much as I make fun of <laughs> make fun of McFarlane for being super ninety edgies guy, um, you know, I'm his toys are amazing. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say they're not. Uh, I've had my issues with some of his stuff. I didn't like his fairy tale line. Uh, he, that was just a nadir of nineties edginess because it's like. I, I like fairy I'm grown up enough to like fairy tales as they are for what they are. I don't feel the need to um, edify them and make them all violent and sexual and disgusting and gross and everything else. I don't need uh, a little bit of an issue with the paint out there. Um, I don't feel a, a need to like you know do this story about how like, Christopher Robin is, like, being sexually abused, and, like, uh, Hundred Acre Wood is this, like, nightmare, nightmare landscape of his trauma, or, um, whatever else. And I don't, I think that stuff is kind of lame and childish and boring, which is why I make fun of the 90s. Um, 90s edgy stuff is that, to me, the 90s edgy stuff is very childish. It's very... The obsession of a teenager is to appear adult by just being, like, edgy and violent and, and sexual and stuff like that, which is, like, which is rather childish. It's super childish. When you get to be an adult in the year 2022 and you're just, like, grow up, <laughs> you know. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at. Um, but for as much as I don't care about his, uh, his take on things... As far as being like super edgy '90s guy, um, the toys are amazing. <laughs> the toys are amazingly sculpted, and I really need some box cut. Yeah. The toys are amazingly sculpted, um, amazingly crafted, I, and he also was part of that whole uh, movement that turned toys into posable models, high-end posable models, um, good or ill. I'm kind of amused that um, five five point figures are becoming a thing because uh, you had Reaction doing their doing their thing, and um, on top of that, now Mezco is getting into it as well, and they're doing a five points five point figure line. So five points being five points of articulation, right? So the two shoulders, the two the two hips and the head. Um, the old Star Wars toys, retro toys, which again, they're also doing those as well. You can buy like retro Mandalorian and stuff like that. So it's, um, and the, uh, the Ghostbusters toys that I did the video of as well are in that same vein of things where it's that, again, very simple, very toy-ish, um, Five points of articulation. This is not working. Oh, there we go. Uh, every time I say it's not going to work, it, it turns around and works on. Um, yeah, a very simple, very toy, toyish, toyetic, whatever the word is. Um, five points of articulation thing, which doesn't create the most dramatic poses, but is fun and retro and and m more inexpensive <laughs> than is uh, uh, posable, high-end posable models of things. But again, I'm not complaining too hard because it still results in having this amazing uh, King Kong figure. Let me just see if the scissors will help with that. I only need wire cutters for this part. There we go. That's done. So, obviously securely packaged, which is nice. Uh, nice to survive. And uh, clearly, now, this has never been taken out of the box. Uh, this is... This is brand spanking new. And brand spanking new... King Kong... What the heck? Brand spanking new, circa year 2000, uh, King Kong being unboxed in the year 2022. There we go. And he's very securely held in there. 
which is good. Otherwise, he wouldn't have lasted for 22 years in this box. Okay, I hope that was on purpose, that painted out there. Okay. Out you go. See, I didn't ask uh, the guy I bought it from what his... Uh, what his deal was, but being an older gentleman, um, and a bit of a hoarder house <laughs> as well, I would say he probably bought this back in the day, back in the year 2000, uh, with the idea that this might be worth something someday. And, uh, correct, it is. Um, I don't know what his situation was that led him to sell it to me for the price that he did, but I'm not... No, I'm complaining about it. Am I worried that I took advantage of him? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. Because do your research. I guess. All right, there we go. So Kong is out. Kong has been liberated. And yeah, <laughs> this is this is a posable model. Uh, not even very posable. You can tell this is designed to go in one specific pose. But it's got, yeah, it's got the shackles on there with actual real chains. Real metal chains on there, which is nice. If I can just, there we go, fix that a little bit. <laughs> Golly, gee whiz, that's... That's the highest point of articulation is in this arm right here because it it moves at the elbow and the shoulder, whereas that's the shoulder, that's just hip. So I and and the waist as well. So this is a seven points of articulation figure. If that head actually moves, yeah, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, seven points of articulation figure. So five points doesn't necessarily mean that it's. Yeah, poorly designed or whatever, but this is definitely like a model that you just don't have to actually build. So Kong has been liberated, and yeah, this is a look at that. I'm actually almost more familiar with this sculpt from the Chap May um, Gorilla <laughs> Action Adventure Kit or whatever, where they just like basically copied this this uh, head sculpt, put it on a on a gorilla figure, um, but. Yeah, I think it captures, it captures the '30s likeness um, in a in a cartoonish fashion. It's not totally accurate. It's kind of it's a bit like the Mezco figure that it's um, like cartoonish rendition of Kong, but it's still recognizably 1933 Kong. Let's uh, see if I can get the rest off here. All right, so there's the stand with some plastic there, uh, nicely packaged in order to protect the protect the stand from the figure. And it's taped on the back though, so I will have to uh, see if I can remove that. Tape on there, without using a blade ideally. Nope, that's not going to happen. So let's very carefully. Just grab them there. There we go. That's good. Right, that's undone. Just leaving a bit of glue on the stand there. That might not even be like wholly intentional. That might just be 22 years of glue being stuck on there. So there we go. That's Kong on his on his perch there, ready to be. I wonder how this is supposed to actually go. I don't think it's supposed to do anything except be what it is, which is that. Very nice. I like the the paint apps on there to make it look like the the steel there, looking pretty good. And we've got one last thing, the one thing that Kong absolutely needs which is his girlfriend. So let me just see if I can get her out of there. There 
we go. We've got a little Fey Ray figure, which, like, as I commented with the NECA and the Mezco figures, you need to have Fey Ray or else it's not, it's not Kong. Now she actually doesn't fit in his hands. No, well, that's a clenched fist. So yeah, so Kong, he's got that hand is is open. If I can get repose, that hand's a little open. This hand is clenched, is a clenched fist. So that's not gonna work. I wonder, does she fit into there? Uh, if she does, that would be a very labored fit. So I'm gonna say probably not. <laughs> I can't get Golly! Gee whiz! Um, yeah. So I'm gonna say that it's probably not meant to fit in his hands. So she just goes right there. And looking terrified. Yeah, this is this is a really nice figure. And I'm really glad that I was able to find it for 60 bucks. Because loose on eBay, Evil Bay, um, loose without the stand, without without Fay Ray is running higher than $60 Canadian. So to find it, unbox it 20 years later, um, is fantastic. He looks, uh, yeah, he looks amazing. This is, this is a great, great statue. <laughs> it's a great statue. Let's compare him to, uh, some of the other ones here. So here he is with, here's Mezco, Skull Island Kong. And I'm gonna give me a sec here. And there he is with NECA, which I did do the uh, take the um, take a hair dryer to his to his hands there and uh, open that up enough to fit the plane inside there. I did decide to do that. So um, yeah, see quite a bit quite a bit larger scale than the two available figures now and but uh i mean they all have their they all have their things these two well i said NECA are posable models because i wouldn't <laughs> i would never play with a NECA figure um they're so fragile in fact um i have to admit this is actually the second round with this one the one that i actually reviewed in a video decided to take a tumble off of my my book stand and uh, broke his foot off got another one bought another one and then as soon as i took it out of the box the foot broke off again same foot in fact so i went back and they actually <laughs> made me at the comic shop another dimension comics in calgary they actually made me open it up and and carefully pose them and stuff to make sure i wasn't going to break them again um <laughs> before they before they parted and company with it and replaced it for me uh, so this is actually, I guess technically this is the third figure then of this NECA Kong that I've gone through. But uh, yeah, that one's like, stay, don't, don't move, <laughs> don't touch him. Um, NECA posable model. Um, the Mezco is again a fun, fun toy. I could actually, like, I, I feel like I can move the Mezco one around without feeling like it's gonna, gonna um, break apart on me. And nice again, a cartoonish, more cartoonish rendition. I think NECA captures the the stop motion model the best. Mezco is cartoonish, and the uh, Todd McFarlane, the Todd McFarlane movie Maniacs Kong is also more cartoonish and much less posable. Like this is this is how he's meant to be posed, obviously, because nothing else looks, no other pose looks good or looks natural with him. Uh, it's 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 a moderately posable model, but the figure, the stand, the the Fay Ray in her evening dress there, I think it's it's fantastic. I'm glad this one didn't have the King Kong printed on there. I've seen on some of the stands as well, because uh, it's like, yep, yeah, I know he's King Kong. Yeah, thanks. Um, amazing showpiece. I and I, I how can you regret <laughs> being able to get this in the box? 22 years later for 60 bucks Canadian. Uh, yeah, that's about all I got to say, really. Join me in this unboxing. This magnificent um, posed statue thing. Uh, looks great. It's going to look great on my shelf. 
uh, if I have space for it. I've run out of space, but you know what? I've got something big coming. Uh, not a big toy, but a big life thing that I'm going to take you on that little ride ride for as well. In the meantime, thanks for joining me on this uh, this unthinkable unboxing of um, a 22-year-old figure <laughs> that's ever been out of the box. And uh, see you next time.